up, it's Haley, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought I would go ahead and do another installment of my thrift flip series. We're probably going through our wardrobes and sifting through clothes, deciding on what to keep and what to sell and what to get rid of. This quarantine situation, I have no idea how long that's gonna last, but all that means is that we have a ton of time to get our clothes ready for when we do head out of our houses. I just have a ton of clothes of things that I thrifted, I wanna change the style of that I'm not absolutely in love with anymore. So we're gonna go take some really simple DIYs to these items and just transform them into some super cute pieces we can style for spring and summer. As with all my thrift flips, we're not gonna be doing any sewing whatsoever, so you're not gonna need a sewing machine, no complicated tools, a pair of scissors, some fabric glue, we're gonna experiment with some tie-dye and bleach as well, and I'm just so, so, so excited to get into it. So lately, one of the most popular trends has been taking either white sweatsuits or white pieces and just tie-dyeing the heck out of them. And I'm so excited to try this for myself for the first time ever. For the actual tie-dye colors, the brand that I found that ended up being the cheapest, I think these are $6 each. They're from Red Dye. But before doing that, you're going to take your shirt and using some rubber bands, you're going to start crinkling it up just like I'm doing here. There's no actual method as to how I'm doing it. I'm really just grabbing the fabric from the bottom and doing this little crinkling motion and then just applying enough rubber bands so that it holds that shape. I'm making sure to do the same thing for the top and the pants as well. Hot water is necessary for this process. Add in a tiny drop of dish soap. So I'm taking a tiny bit of the emerald color and then I'm adding a tiny bit of tan as well to make it more earthy and a little more neutral. And then after I mix the color with a wooden spoon, I just test it on the towel to make sure that it's a color that I actually like. Having my squeezer bottle filled, I'm just gonna get to dyeing and start placing it all over the clothes. As you can see, I'm trying to get the whole outer layer dyed because I know that the inside is still gonna remain kind of white. And then once you have your pieces all done, you're just gonna grab them and tie them so after four hours, I took them back into my tub and using some cold water, I just made sure to rinse out as much dye as I possibly could. And because I actually wanted a few more pieces to match the set, I ended up doing a little tank top also and some white Nike socks too. Grabbing the entire sweatsuit, all you're gonna do next is just put it in your washer, do like a quick little cold rinse cycle, put it in the dryer, and once that's out, you have your entire sweatsuit completely done. When I started rinsing this out, I really thought I wasn't gonna like this because it wasn't the color I wanted, but oh my god, it turned out so freaking cool. I love this like marbling effect that it has and the tie-dye just kind of went in all the right places. So obviously because I wanted more of like a spring summer video, that's why I did a little wife beater tank top, which by the way, these tie-dye super well and you can get like a pack of three on Amazon right now for like $10. And then here's what the full on set actually looks like and I love, love, love it. It matches so perfectly, which I was kind of surprised because something I noticed, this top right here is 100% cotton and I think the pants were like 40% polyester. So because of that, I was definitely scared that the pants were gonna take the color differently. I personally really like tops that are more cropped so instead of having to go and give it a cropped you can really just tuck it under your bra create a full crop top this is something that I just do so often and then that way if you want a two-piece set that looks like it's cropped you got it but if you want to cover up your midriff and just be a little bit more cozy you have that too and so stoked I love So a second tie-dye set that I wanted to make was one that was slightly more blue. So to get this color, I just did two tablespoons of the emerald green and then two tablespoons of evening blue. All right, so here's the second set that I made. And with this one, while I do really like the color, I did run into that problem by using two pieces that have different percentages of fabrics. So the issue with that is while I use the same color, you can actually see that the tie-dye kind of catched and bled differently. Like on these pants, the white spots are fully, fully white. But in the top part, you can see that the white kind of bled a little bit blue. So because they mismatch I personally will probably just wear them separately so for example these pants alone with a white tank top it's such a cute look together and it's probably how I'm gonna end up styling these in the spring and summer and then for this one I just did the opposite I paired the sweater with a black pair of jeans and I think it looks so good that way Another huge request from you guys was to do some bleach dyeing. So I'm gonna be doing the same crinkle method with this black fully thrifted sweatsuit, securing it tightly with the elastic bands before bleaching it. And I'm actually doing the same thing with this lavender Adidas sweatshirt. I was just so curious to see what the bleach was gonna to do to this. So let's see for ourselves. I have my Clorox right here and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and splash it on to these pieces that I wanna bleach, including these black ones right here. And this is something that you are gonna to have to do on both sides and just sit and let it develop for like about an hour. Okay, so here's how the black set turned out. Gonna be honest, it's not my favorite because I personally just like lighter colors, but if you're someone who's like really into neutral tones and such, this definitely may be a good option for you.
This is kind of insane, you guys. I'm so shook at the color that this ended up becoming. I do wish that the sweater kept a few splotches of that lavender, but I do really like the pink. I don't have a single baby pink sweater. So let's go and quickly do a little flip on this. You guys know that I'm somebody who just loves to crop my top, so I'm just taking a little washable marker and just marking around where my belly button is. I'm thinking to kind of give it like a raw hem v-neck cut. Just gonna grab my fabric scissors. These cut through anything like butter. As you can see, I'm just laying it down super, super flat and then kind of using my scissors trying to find that guideline that we marked before. After flattening it down, I'm really just gonna be doing a v-shape kind of joining in that dot in the middle that I created. I'm actually so pumped at how this top came out. Um, the v-neck I did was a little bit deep, but I kind of like that I can wear it off the shoulder like this with a pair of denim. And is it just me? This kind of looks like it was a white sweater that I tie-dyed pink, but so cool who would have known if you have something purple you want to turn it pink bleach and you're good to go and then something on my instagram you guys told me you wanted to see more of is how you can take a dress and maybe turn it into like a cute top or a cute skirt this thrifted dress i absolutely love and this top right here really reminds me of something that i've seen on urban outfitters except in a red color so that's for sure something that's worth making only thing is if i give this shirt a crop right about here it's definitely going to be too short that i know myself i'm not going to wear it because it's going to expose too much midriff so instead again i'm just going to be finding my belly button and giving myself a crop right about there and then using this bottom fabric right here why throw it out when you can turn it into a really cute skirt and basically all you're gonna be needing for the skirt portion is just an elastic band so I'm just gonna go and use this elastic band to kind of measure the size of my waist of where I want the skirt to be this is the piece that I'm left with and now we're gonna give this a crop and turn it into a really cute two-piece so laying down the dress super flat obviously the first thing you want to do is just give this a crop and the one thing I want you to keep in mind is you don't want to do a straight cut when it's a peplum top so as you can see here when I'm cutting, I'm doing kind of like a slight rounded edge just so it can look more flattering when it's on. And for the skirt portion, I'm just so stoked that I was able to find something that was like a no-so method to making skirts. Turning the skirt inside out, you're actually going to want to take the top of the skirt and give it a slight fold. So in order to create a little pathway for your elastic to go through, you're just going to be gluing down the edges using some liquid stitch. This thing is my best friend. I use it for everything. Make sure to leave a slight little hole at the top of the hem so that you have some space to thread the elastic later. Once that hem is all dried up, I'm just taking a safety pin and just putting it through the elastic and slowly just threading the entire elastic throughout the whole skirt. Once I finish that, you can see that I have the two ends sticking out and I'm actually just going to safety pin them together. You can obviously sew it if you want to make it so secure, but I feel like the safety pin is good enough in this case. And it literally hides right in the hem of the skirt. So when you guys turn it over, this is what you're left with. All right, so the two-piece set is done. And while it's technically done, I don't like them together. I just feel like the reason I want to make it into a two-piece is so that I can style the skirt with a different top and the top with a pair of jeans. I absolutely love the way that the top turned out as a top, like pairing it with some jeans. I really feel like this looks exactly like something I'd see on Reformation or even Urban Outfitters too. But just such a nice top. Actually, I'm so happy I took a pair of scissors to this. With this dress, I actually want to go ahead and turn it into a two-piece as well. Just like that other red one, I saw a top that resembles this so much on Urban Outfitters. Gonna do the same thing as I did with the last. I want the top to come about right here. And then we're gonna use the rest of the fabric to create a skirt. After giving it a crop, this shirt actually had a zipper. So I put some liquid stitch just so that the zipper doesn't unravel at any point. Top is done, so moving on to the skirt, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing, folding it over. Just make sure that when you're gluing the edge, you're leaving some space for the elastic to go through. Once the skirt was dry, I just fished through the elastic, pinned the two ends together, and this one actually turned out so freaking cute. Oh my gosh, okay, I like this one so much better than the red. I just feel like the fabric on this one just came as a better two-piece, so definitely fabric does matter. As you can see, when it's together, it still kind of looks like it's a dress, but like that little bit of midriff automatically makes it look so much more expensive because it looks like a two-piece. But especially the skirt, I mean, it's long enough that I can wear it on its own with something else, but even as I said, it looks so cute together. Basically, ultimate takeaway from this DIY, if you guys are gonna do it, try Try to find a dress that's more of a softer fabric and also a dress that already has some wiggle room in terms of fabric because you technically have to hem it a little bit you are going to be losing some length so keep that in mind if you're going to be recreating this diy but i really love it especially out of the two this is still something i'm excited to wear for spring <laughs> Basically, I have these thrifted um, champion sweatpants and these are a little bit too big for me to wear as like everyday sweats But I actually want to turn them into sweat shorts. Sweat shorts is kind of hard to determine what length of them I want, but how about we try 
about there. So to create perfect hem sweatshorts, it couldn't be easier. Obviously, wherever you marked off your length, you're gonna be giving it a straight cut. And then taking the fabric I already cut, I'm gonna use that as a guideline to make sure that the other leg is gonna be even. And to get that perfect hem sweatshort, you're just gonna be taking the short, folding it over to create a slight little hem, and dabbing a little bit of that liquid stitch to create a perfect hem for your shorts. And that's it, let that dry, and you have a perfect dupe for some boyfriend sweatshorts. And the champion sweatshorts are done too, and they actually came out at like a perfect length. They're definitely looking very boyish, but that's what I like. It just feels like you stole your like boyfriend's sweatshorts or something. Aritzi has a ton of these, and so does Urban Outfitters. Obviously, they're super expensive. And the fact that we have the nice little champion logo peeking through, added bonus. All right, and the last thing I wanted to go ahead and make is actually customize a pair of shoes. I have these really cool green shoes that I thrifted. I'm not showing you my toes because I desperately need a pedicure, but while I really, really like these shoes, I do feel like the green is a little bit too intense and harder to wear. So I have a really fun idea for these. Not only is this super simple, but it's also really cheap too. And main thing you're gonna be needing is this dollar store kind of diamond net. I saw this idea from my girl, Rachel from Rage Speed. You're just gonna roughly cut out the size of the surface that you wanna cover, and you're just gonna be gluing it down using some E6000 glue, I'm making sure to cover the entire surface that I want to stick. And then just place this diamond net on, pat it down slightly, and let it dry. Coming back, it's all dry now. Just grabbing a pair of scissors, you're going to be cutting off the excess trim. And that is literally it. This is the simplest DIY ever, and I'm so obsessed with how I made these turn out. Guys, they turned out so freaking cute. I am actually so obsessed with these. I feel like this jeweled effect made them so much fancier looking. Rachel, such a freaking good idea. I'm going to link her video down below where she did this. You guys have to check it out. But this is how they look like on and i'm so obsessed with them i totally forgot to film an outro for this video but thank you guys so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed it be sure to give it a really big thumbs up if you did let me know down below which of these diys was your favorite and which one you try out for yourself subscribe down below if you haven't already to join our amazing family love y'all so much and i can't wait to see you in my next one Mwah.